I leave for a week and I come back to some of the biggest amount of progress that I've seen in a while. There's an airfield here. Look at this. The amount of detail in this with the left and the right and that how there's not even any aircraft. This is Scar, you've you've gone mad. You've gone absolutely mental. There's a tower there. The the hangar is now over the side. I can even see inside of that. I can't really tell what it is from here. But look at this. They are definitely up to something. And do you see that? That portal looks absolutely demolished. How have they done this? Oh, I really shouldn't go inside, but what if I sort of just float around here? No, it's not a glitch. It's that's real. That's a real that's a real cursed portal right there. How weird. And it looks like there's been a little accident over here with a gigantic explosion. I don't know what these guys are up to, but I don't like it. And as you know, Ren and I have set up shop over here in our little hippie vans. Let's pop some music on because we've got some work to do. Well, I've actually already been doing some work down here. As you can see, I have been digging a big hole. Big holes are very useful in Minecraft because you can hide things from the man. And basically what Ren and I are going to do, we've, we've sort of hashed out an entire plan. We're going to dig a tunnel over to Area 77 or just inside Area 77. But we have to make sure that we're not seen at any point. And I'm kind of counting on you guys not to let them know because, yeah, this is, this is pretty important that this stays secret. But to stop them kind of coming in and just exploring all this for themselves, because I haven't really hidden that very well. I mean, you can see it from the outside. I'm going to make sure that we hide this properly from them. We need a barrier of some kind. And I sort of started over here with this very pathetic ball. But I need to do some terraining to create some sort of cliff to just stop them coming in and being able to see exactly what we're doing at all times, which is basically what they can do now. So seeing as I've been away for a week there, I do have an awful lot that I need to do. But let's start this little time lapse of some very basic terraining to get a cliff going so that we can hide what we're doing a little better. And then we can crack on with the lava game that I have over there. And I actually want to try out Scar's new mini- oh, there it is. I want to try out this game here because you can make some diamonds there. But let's get this out of the way first. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to create some scar-like terraining around our little hippie commune so we can get some privacy. So a little bit of a cliff and I'm paying the most attention to the two sides that are the most exposed. And I'm paying particular attention to the side that faces Area 77 because we don't want them to be able to see what we're up to. Or at least we want them to try and be intrigued by what we're doing. But terraining, it takes a long time and it's a very, very tedious job. But you can do a lot with a little. That little cliff has a lot of details in it. I just gotta say, thousands of, thousands of stone and dirt went into this. And then I placed all the kind of vegetation so that the trees grow around it and to create some sort of foliage barrier. I think this looks pretty cool. I think that is a pretty formidable wall. You cannot see inside the hippie commune at all. Obviously, they can walk in, but I can walk in here as well. So they've got this truck here, which looks pretty cool, by the way. I don't know who made this, probably Scar, but it, it actually looks really cool. And they've got a couple of armor stands here watching us with a bat head and um, observer. So what I thought we could do is two people can play at this game. They might be watching us. They can't see anything now, but we can also do something for them as well. I just need to find the right spot, which isn't here. Oh, this is a dangerous place. No, this is a dangerous place. Oh, this is a very dangerous place. Please don't. Please, I just terrained all this. Why don't I light anything up? No! Why are there so many? Ah, oh. well, that's a bit annoying. Okay, that's a little better. Actually, you know what? This might be a lot easier if we work from the outside in. And also while we're here, we can plant some peace flags just so they know they're dealing with someone that just wants to be friends. There we go. So if they are looking about, that looks like a really good spot right here. 
So what I'm going to do is just a little spot with a glass window in, just like they have. Then we're going to add an armor stand right there, and we're going to add a vindicator head to it, so he kind of blends in with all of the stone. And then from the outside, this should look pretty funny. So let's go and have a look at our new spy. So they're looking at us. He's even, it even looks like he's pointing over there. Oh, I need to give him like some leather armor or whatever. But that, <laughs> that's pretty cool. And you know what? I think every episode we could add a couple more. So if they notice them, they'll notice that like two more are coming up, three more. Actually, I've got a really good idea that we can do over the next few episodes that includes adding more and more of these. There we go. So I've got a leather tunic. If I make that light gray, there we go. That gives him some clothes and it makes him look a little less like an armor stand. There we go. Two can play at this game. They've got spies. We've got spies. But as I said before, I actually wanted this area, the hippie commune, to be kind of useful. And I thought what we could do, if it's even possible, is to create micro farms inside of these RVs. So I'm going to give it a go. Obviously, there's not a lot of room for redstone. And the limited redstone that I can do, it definitely doesn't really compact very well. So this is going to be a learning curve, but I'm pretty sure with a little bit of research, maybe with a little bit of help as well, we can make something that will fit inside here. The great thing is that I've already made one RV, so it's kind of just a case of copying it. But I, I need to make sure that they look slightly different. Not everyone has the same RV. That would be super embarrassing if you turned up to a hippie commune and everyone has the same RV. So to start off with something really, really simple, I thought what we could do is make a little dye farm. Now, obviously, these are so simple, it's unbelievable. But I think it's one of those things that fits really well into our whole hippie theme. And it fits rather nicely into this RV. So all I've got to do is get some dispensers and then make a clock. And then it should spam these out pretty swiftly. I've got the dispenser set up. I've built somewhat of the RV. It's kind of similar to mine, but a little bit different. Either way, what we're going to do is hop into the van and build the redstone for this. Now, hmm, I'm kind of guessing, but I, I, th I think I've actually learned a bit of redstone just through osmosis, okay? So I don't really know what I'm doing, but I just, I think this will work. Just give me a second. If I place the sticky piston there, place an observer like that, and all I've got to do is just get these activating over and over again. So, bit of redstone dust over the top, all the way here, and it literally should be as simple as that. Actually, I need to just fill them up full of some bone meal. If I am correct, which I'm probably not, I place the lever here, I switch it on, well, what do you know? I mean, that's the most basic redstone in the world, but it's producing flowers. Sweet. And it produces them quickly as well. Then I can just take those, turn those into dyes, and we've got a pretty successful dye farm right here. Now, obviously, these are only some basic colors. We got some red, we got some magenta. This is probably pink over here. So we're gonna have to make another farm another day for all the other colors. But this is a really good start. Now all I need to do is collect them using a hopper system. How does one do that? Well, the first thing that we can do before we worry about that is finish off this RV. Just needs a roof now and maybe some finer detailing, but then that's pretty much complete. There we go, that's the basic RV pretty much complete. This hippie commune's coming together rather nicely. I'm just going to do a little test on, again, this is redstone that I've learned kind of just by watching other people. I don't actually know what I'm doing, but if this works, this will be a pretty big step in me understanding redstone a little more. So I'm just going to add this one here to see if this works. All right, we lose some, but it's all going in. Now, does it end up in... Yeah, well, there we go. Problem solved. 
So in theory, all I've got to do is replicate this over. This might not be ideal for the long term, but at least the short term, I think this will work quite well. So if I add this for full efficiency, and I turn this on, that, that seems to be working. We've got ourselves an RV flower farm. It's beautiful. Now, obviously, this only gives us pink, magenta, and red dye. I could add a sunflower one here as well, because there's actually a couple more of these uh, two tall flowers that we can use. But I do actually, as I said earlier, want to create a small flower farm, but that will cover pretty much yellow. Uh, so I don't have to worry too much. Let's take a look at how quickly this gets through the bone meal, because that's kind of a big factor. Oh, boy. I guess I only have to wait for this to run out, and then I've got to restock it, so it's not perfect. Fortunately, I have all of these bone blocks to get through, so we have pretty much unlimited flowers. Now, if I want to access it, that's a bit of a different story, because the chests at the moment are all up there. It sounds like it's run out of bone meal already, but let's see what we've got. Lots and lots of flowers. And I've just had a thought. This is me starting to think a bit more like a redstone person, but I can add a chest and a hopper to refill these dispensers as it, it rocks through all of the bone meal to keep it topped up. Unfortunately, I do have to spend a little bit of time decrafting everything and filling up all of these chests, which is it's pretty tedious, but it's fairly easy to do. So, I've got all of these chests now full of bone meal, so they can then feed into the dispensers, and it won't run out nearly as quickly, and we'll have all of those dyes. This is actually really cool. I can, I can totally see why making farms is fun for a lot of people. It's just like, the only thing I'll say is that this is an easy farm. Maybe I'll learn redstone properly next season. Now with that RV done, that's kind of one of the farms, the big flower farm. I know I forgot the sunflower, but I'll add it in another time. When I actually find one, I haven't actually seen a sunflower. So when I see one, I'll add it to the new RV flower machine. But there is actually something I want to do while this machine was running. I mean, it's run out of bone meal already, but look how much, look how much flowers I've got. Like each one of these is going to make two dye. I basically have unlimited magenta dye here. So, so much dye. But what I want to do is, because Ren is actually on right now, I don't know where he is, but he's going to be building some stuff in the hippie commune too. So I want to make sure I plan something out before he builds here, because this area isn't going to be just this corner. We're going to make this really big. So what I'm going to be making is a little bit of a secret, I'm not going to lie, but it's important for the future of the hippie commune. And it might not make immediate sense what this is going to be, but in the future, this circle that I'm making will play quite a big part in what we're going to be doing. Basically, We've got, while we're working our way towards Area 77, to come up with different ways of distracting Doc and Scar from what we're doing. We've obviously hidden ourselves using this really nice looking natural Minecraft tree barrier, but we've also got to distract them in other ways, and this is where the giant circle comes in. There we go, we've got the full circle right here. This is actually quite large in size, and it's going to take up a good portion of the hippie commune. But this circle, well, I guess you'll find out in a future episode. I'm really proud of the progress that's been made in this episode alone to the hippie, hippie community, shall we say. Oh look, there's Ren himself. He's in, he's in his van. What's he doing? Is he, is he, is he on the toilet? I think he might be. Oh. <laughs> So, oh, sorry, oh, oh, sorry, 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 Ren. I'll, um, I'll leave you to it then. I used to think that these wandering traders were really annoying, but I actually think that they're kind of useful because these guys find you wherever you are. 
but you could just get free leather every time they turn up and some leads although the wandering villagers themselves aren't that useful but the llamas anyway i think that's actually quite enough of the hippie area because i actually want to go and try out scar's new mini game which is the giant airplane that we didn't know what it was last time so i need to go and read what this is oh and there's a giant target now so I heard that this is a flying mini game, meaning that I should be able to be quite good at it. Welcome to the diamond drop. Please read the instructions. The objective is to catch as many diamonds as possible while free falling from the plane. If you die, the diamonds must be returned to the diamond chest at the tent. The diamonds you catch and land with are your prize. Place your items in the locker, take five rockets, pay here, take one parachute. Well, this seems, this seems simple enough. Oh, I totally forgot that I have to pay. Five diamonds for two jumps. Okie dokie. Well, there we are. Five diamonds. Let's give this a go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pre-fight checklist. One sleep in bed, two pay, take one elytra, take five rockets, fly up to the airplane. Okay, well, I've got to wait for night. That's going to take too long. I need to play right now. So we've got to fly up to the airplane, and I need to... I need to save as many rockets as I can. Oh, really? I'm only I'm only going to end up with one rocket for this. All right, skydivers, welcome to Diamond Drop. Press the button and wait for flight. Stand on that trap door. So I guess I just press this. I wait for the drop. Go! Got one diamond. Come on, give me that. Okay, I see. Okay, I made it back. So where does everything drop? Oh man, I totally lost like 90 levels. I have no idea where everything ends up. So I think I have to return these. Okay, so let's try this again. That was just a practice run. I've never played this game before, so I wasn't quite sure. So I need to get up there as easily as possible without using too many rockets. Okay, I managed to do it with two spare this time, if I actually make it. Come on. Yeah, we should make that. Okay, I got two rockets this time. Right, this is this is drop two. Do I fall fast or do I have to dive? There we go. Got the diamond! Does that count? Is that it? I got... Oh my goodness! I got 11 diamonds! Capture as many diamonds as possible before activating your elytra parachute. Timing of the release is crucial for success. It doesn't say anything about not using the fireworks as you fall. So it says... You gotta do that, and then you gotta pull your parachute out. But I don't think Scar knows that you can totally change your trajectory with the fireworks. I've checked everywhere, and there is nothing about it. It just says take five rockets, and it doesn't. I guess you could just use the rockets how you like. Guys, I am about to take every diamond Scar has from this mini game. Let's do it. Ten diamonds for four runs. So let's take our five rockets here. So I got my five rockets. Got my elytra. We're about to take Scar for every diamond he's put in this mini game. All right, here we go again. Go, diamond, diamond. Block. Oh, did I miss the block? I missed the block that time. Okay, so I actually I made four diamonds. Okay, another five rockets. Here we go again. This is two out of four. Here we go. One diamond. Two diamond. Ah, uh, I only got three. I still made a profit on it. Okay, this is actually a little bit harder than I thought. However, we're still making some diamonds. So I got two more runs. Right, drop three. Here we go. There, I saw I saw the diamond block right here. Yes, I got it! Yes, I got it! Snatched it out of the air! I don't know how many diamonds I'm missing, but as long as I get the block, it's totally worth it. All right. We put the rockets back. We grab another five rockets. Scar, I hope you've loaded this thing to the brim with diamonds because I'm about to be the champion. And I only need one rocket to do this. All right, this is number four out of four. Uh, there's no diamonds. <laughs> there's no diamonds left. There's no diamonds left. Scar, you owe me a run of this game. You owe me a run. Even with an empty last run, we made, well, how many diamonds did we make? We've spent 10 diamonds here. 
and we got 19 back. Easiest nine diamonds I ever made. I'm going to ask him to refill it, and then I'm just going to play this game until it's empty again, and then I'm going to ask him to refill it. Honestly, I think I've broken the Hermitcraft minigame system. Easy, easy money. So Scar owes me one run, but speaking of minigames, I've actually made a little bit of progress on this manor here, which is actually one of my minigames. Now this is basically the floor is lava, which is a fantastic game to play in any situation. So I've added this graveyard outside. This is basically just to be decoration because what's underneath is what's important. It's going to be a crypt. Oh, I'm still totally wearing... So, what I've done is decorated just a couple of the rooms. I haven't actually linked up any redstone yet, but you can see these dispensers. These are going to release the tokens, so people will jump around, they collect the tokens, and then they've got to get out. Obviously, anything that's air down here is going to be lava, and it's going to be pretty dangerous. And you've got to take a leap of faith sometimes to get to the hidden, uh, to the hidden dispensers. And it's going to be a lot of fun because if you want the top prizes in this game, you've really got to explore it and try and get to the more dangerous locations. And sometimes you've got to activate some trap doors if you want to get to, say, up here. Well, some, some places, like so. And everyone that's tried this so far has ended up there, which would mean death. And it's, it's very easy to mess up. And obviously, the more you explore, the more chance you have of falling in the lava. However... I quickly realized that this is a project that's going to take me multiple episodes. So I feel like I've made some decent progress here and I need to make some more dispensers and stuff. But uh, it's going to take me a while to finish this one, I think, unfortunately. And then I need to make uh, a little area over here with all the tokens. So it's going to be like an arcade. So, so the prizes would be like, you know, maybe a box full of diamonds. But you'd have to play this game multiple times and be successful in order to get the tokens for it. I also want to offer a quick apology for not having any videos for over a week now. I haven't actually been at home at all. I've been away, I think I said it in my last episode, but I know that a week is quite a long time on the internet. But I'm back now and I'm working on new videos all day, every day, and hopefully we'll see a lot more Hermitcraft and some other things as well. So thank you very much for all of your support. But there's actually quite a lot that's been added while I've been away on my rest and relaxation. Specifically over there, now, uh, by the way, what I'm doing here is just adding a bit of decoration to the Hermitland sign. I thought it could use something here just to, just to fill the space a little bit more. But that Hermitland sign has actually been replicated right over here. So we've got an identical one that I assume Cub has made right here and it enters the second half of Hermitland. And guess what? Those cheeky con corpse, they've made a food truck and they're selling golden carrots two stacks for one diamond. And they're actually selling their carrots. Why, why are people buying from Concorp and not my Sahara Eats over there? That's, I, I, I was there first. We might have to undercut them in price because that's really, whoa, whoa. The Hermitcraft party bus is leaving the station. Everyone is on board. Am I here? Oh, no, there I am. I'm just sitting on the back. I don't know what's going on here, but this is awesome. Guess what? Opening soon. Oh, wow, that's cool. We've got a roller coaster. This is awesome. Hermitland is becoming one of the best projects on Hermitcraft right now. There's just so much entertainment. The games are fun. The builds are quite cool. Actually, the builds could look a little better. The builds could look a little better, but they are for they're for entertainment purposes, not to look good. Although I must admit, I've always had a bit of a sweet spot for that mansion of mine. Anyway, I'm afraid I have run out of time for today, but we did get an awful lot done, actually. We have made some significant progress to the Floor is Lava game. Now, this is obviously going to take me a long time. We bled Scar dry on this one. As soon as he restocks all of those diamonds in there... I'm going to get so good at that minigame that he's going to have to close down. We have made significant progress to the hippie commune over here by adding our own custom terrain with a cliff and look at Ren doing his thing. 
and we added our own little farm under over here which goes underground and we've got a little secret circle thing going on over there we've been busy and there's more to come so i will see you in the next episode thank you very much for watching and good bye